CR, that's cracking moment. And anything higher than that, that region of the beam, it has cracks, all right? So one of these begins, and then uh, uh, the, the, the subsequent cracks develop also. These are all on the tension side. What are we talking about tension side? Tell me, this is a review of what I covered uh, for you last week. This moment diagram that I'm showing you in part A, it's all positive, right? It's above the x-axis. So what did I tell you about positive moments? Positive moments cause the beam to behave how? You got it. It's a smiling. It's a smiling face. So positive moments cause the beam to deflect like this. So what do we learn? What do we observe? The bottom is in tension. All right? So the bottom is in tension. These cracks develop on the tension side. Very good. Now, on the test, they will give you certain uh, properties, and they will ask you, please find the cracking moment for this beam. This slide actually shows the, the second and, and consequently the third stage of life of the beam. So let's move on. What I want you to concentrate on is, is this, how to calculate cracking moment. All right? How to calculate the cracking moment. And I'm going to show you an example. This is, this is very important, and, and it's not difficult at all. All right? OK. Now, guys, we are talking all about beams. And beams, we talked about it last week, it was what? Um, flexure, all right? So the flexure equation, what type of stress was associated with the flexure? You got it, bending stress, bending stress. And if you go back to the notes that I presented to you last Thursday, what equation did I give you for bending stress? I'll see if I can write it here. Um, do, you re do you remember the equation for bending stress? What I gave you last Thursday was sigma is equal to mc over i. Let's see if I can do this. And we spent some time explaining and learning what m, c, and i are in that equation. All right? Now, when it comes to concrete, we use the exact same equation, but with different nomenclature. All right? So here's what I want you to pay attention to. This equation at the very top, top right, is exactly the same as what we called last Thursday, sigma is equal to mc over i. Except when it comes to concrete, we use the lowercase f, the lowercase f for stress. All right? So that is stress. And what about the other ingredients? M is M. What we called C, what we called C last week is now Y. OK? And what we, the, the denominator, which was moment of inertia, is still I, moment of inertia. But this one has a uh, subscript G. It's I sub G. G stands for gross in this case. And I will explain to you what that is in just a minute. All right? So uh, the flexure formula in terms of concrete is F is equal to MY over I sub over I. MY over I. All right? Now, the other thing that I want you to really understand is, OK, if you go back to your notes, the second term I told you that you need to learn is modulus of rupture. If you go back to your notes, if you wrote it down, that's what you wrote down, modulus of rupture. Guys, this is where we're going to learn what modulus of rupture is and more importantly, how do we calculate it? Well, in the middle of this slide that we are all looking at, you see this very small equation. F sub R, that stands for modulus of rupture. 
all right? Modulus of rupture, and basically that is a stress. That is the stress, now pay attention, that is the stress that causes that first crack to occur on the tension side of the beam, all right? F, because it is a stress, and R, because it causes rupture. So, and we don't call it rupture stress. We, the concrete industry, the, the concrete professionals, they, they refer to it as the uh, modulus of rupture, all right? So, learn that. Modulus of rupture, simply, very simply, is equal to 7.5, the number 7.5, times the square root of F prime C. All right? Now, in order to calculate the cracking, the moment that causes the first crack, M cracking down here, we just rework that flexure equation. There it is. M cracking is equal to FR I sub G, gross moment of inertia, divided by Y sub T. Now, why do we say Y sub T? T stands for tension. So Y is the distance between the centroid of that cross-section to the, the, the side that's in tension, either top or bottom. Let's move on to the next slide. Now, I want everyone to get involved in calculating uh, uh, the, the answer to this problem, all right? Just imagine this is the, the day of the test, and let's, let's see how we can do. It says, for a concrete with a compressive strength of 4,000 PSI, so F prime C this concrete has been designed to reach 4,000 PSI in 28 days. So F prime C is equal to 4,000 pounds per square inch. Then it says, assuming the concrete is uncracked. Please underline this and make a mental note. I will tell you what that means. If you see it on, a, on the test, exactly how do you deal with it, all right? It, they say concrete is uncracked. And then they say, would you please compute the bending stresses in the extreme fibers? That means either top or bottom. If the beam is subjected to a moment of 25 foot caps, make a note of the uh, units, 25 foot caps, all right? Um, what, are, what is it that we are uh, tr uh, trying to solve for? Bending stress. So what, what is the equation? Let's go to the next slide. There it is. Do you agree? OK, good. So this is the equation that we apply. It's concrete. So F, compressive, uh, well, actually, it's stress, flexural stress, is equal to my over I sub g. Now, let me tell you why the moment of inertia, in this case, we call I sub g. The G stands for gross, and it, it, not because it's yucky. We call it gross because, pay attention, we are using the entire cross-section, the entire concrete cross-section to calculate the moment of inertia that we call gross moment of inertia. And why? Where do we get the clue that we must use the gross moment of inertia? Because, because they specified this is uncracked. All right? Remember I told you the significance of the uncracked? I will, uh, I will tell you what the significance is. Here is the significance. All right? So... Uh, and, and Gary says, uh, when, if, when, when it is uncracked, that you use the full section. Absolutely correct, yes. So me, it means in order to find the moment of inertia, I'm going to use, uh, well, this is a rectangle. So the moment of inertia for a rectangle is 1 half, or, I'm sorry, 1 12. 1 over 12 times B times H cubed. And let me see if I can uh, e erase some of these things. I guess I cannot. I 
did it. So uh, the moment of uh, uh, iner uh, moment of inertia here, I is one twelve times B is the base. All right, we have the base, which is twelve. H, in this case, we are using um, eighteen, the entire depth. All right, and that's what we mean. This will be the gross. All right. Um, and you may ask, is there a case, is there a time that we would not be using the entire cross-section? Yes, absolutely. And I will tell you that uh, in just a minute. Yeah, um, Patricia, I hope I, I pronounced that correctly, Patricia. Um, she points out that I did not give the dimensions on slide 13. Um, you're correct. That is an oversight. They will give you the, the cross-section, the dimensions. And here it is. These are the dimensions uh, for, for that should have been on, on slide 13, OK? The, the dimensions, they will give that to you. Um, there is another question about uh, from Mary. Mary says, um, what about the dimensions, or, or I'm sorry, the, the units for uh, uh, F prime C? Is it PSI, uh, PSI or KSI? Well, it could be either. It could be either. Uh, they will specify that. And, and all of us need to pay very close attention to what the, the problem actually specifies, because we need to deal with it. So it, it would be either pounds per square inch or keps per square inch, all right? And I will give you examples of that. Um, now, the second part of this uh, problem, and uh, by the way, uh, to, to find the stress very quickly, look, guys, uh, what do they use for, uh, uh, what do they use for uh, Y? Um, it's nine inches. All right, nine right here. All right, so that is the stress. And uh, the, the other thing is uh, the units were 25, 25. Uh, you see the, the moment, the bending moment was given to be 25 foot caps. And, and when, you, when you do the equation, please pay attention. Um, this 12, this is a conversion factor. I multiply the 25 by 12. Now it's inch caps, and then I multiply by another 1,000. Now it's inch foot, because this y is in inches, 9 inches, and the moment of inertia in the bottom, that is inch to the fourth. All right, so we made that compatible, so the answer comes out to be 463 PSI. So pay close attention to those uh, conversions, all right? Now, the second part, which is actually the, the more important part of this problem, this is very important. Uh, so um, they ask you, and this is, it's very good possibility. They ask you, what is the cracking moment for this beam? Here's what we do. This is the equation for a cracking moment. Make a note of it. In the very bottom, and I showed you exactly how we got it on the previous uh, slide, a couple of slides ago. All right? So we know I gross. We know YT. What we don't know is FR. And again, I will remind you, FR is the modulus of rupture. It is the stress that causes the first stress in, in, the, in the concrete beam, all right? It's the stress that, that causes the first crack, all right? The stress that causes the first crack in the concrete beam. So um, how do we calculate it? There it is. That's that simple equation that I gave, showed you uh, in the previous, uh, I think, two slides ago. All right? Make sure that you uh, highlight that. So rupture, uh, modulus.